all new Dr. Phil. The doctor who murdered his wife. He almost got away with it. New allegations from his daughter. He uncovered a web of lies. About his mistress. Was she a Wiccan priestess? I'm told that she was casting spells. Gypsy says that's laughable. I believe it did happen. Their shameless act that even shocked Dr. Phil. And this was just a week after my mother's death. That is cold. Well, today we're talking about a story that continues to make headlines. A prominent doctor plots to murder his wife and make her death look like an accident. He almost got away with it. But Martin McNeil's children would not rest until their father was behind bars. Now, one of his daughters is here today to speak out for the first time about her dad's mistress, who posed as the nanny. It was a dramatic trial that everyone was talking about that included testimony from not one, but two of Martin McNeil's mistresses. Take a look. Breaking news tonight, a 911 call from a doctor lawyer when a six-year-old little girl comes home to find mommy face up in red water in the family bathtub. She is unconscious and underwater. A Pleasant Grove judge ordered Martin McNeil to stand trial for murder and obstruction of justice. Prosecutors say he gave his wife a lethal combination of drugs. Michelle was found dead in her bathtub while in Martin's care. It was horrifying. I mean, he killed my mother. Alexis is the daughter that was there at her mother's side in the hospital after that fatal facelift. Her father was telling Michelle McNeil to just swallow it. One major factor for the prosecution on this case, they say that McNeil's long-term affair with Gypsy Willis was the former doctor's motive for allegedly killing his wife. Willis testified she met Martin McNeil online in November 2005, and by January, the relationship had turned sexual. The affair continued until the day Michelle McNeil died. Are you familiar with what was happening on April 14th? I believe that was the day of his wife's funeral. And did you attend that funeral? I did. Oh, Gypsy. Woo. She testified that the very day after Michelle's death, are you sitting down? She sent sexy pictures of her back and her rear end to Dr. McNeil, the supposedly grieving husband who was her secret lover. What are these pictures showing? They are of me in a mirror, um, you know, exposing my back. Is it exposing below your back as well? There's one picture where it, it uh, is a little bit suggestive showing your buttocks. It was a circumstantial case, but in the end, prosecutors convinced the jury that McNeil did it. The jury, having reviewed the evidence and testimony in the case, find the defendant as to count one murder guilty. Ah! I can't believe this has finally happened. We're so, we're so grateful. Now, at first, police think it's a tragic accident, but family members were certain that Dr. McNeil was responsible. A series of bizarre clues emerged. Martin allegedly pressured his wife to get a facelift. He demanded to be in control of dispensing her medications. And Martin had a seductive mistress, a young brunette named Gypsy Willis. Now, Gypsy recently appeared on our show, and she admitted that she and Martin participated in a lot of scandalous activity, much of it while the dirt on his wife's grave was still fresh. Tell me what is it you want people to know about you? The portrayal of the media has been very, very harsh. You were his mistress. I was. The truth is you were potentially an incentive for him to kill his wife, which a jury just found him guilty of. As you sit here today, do you believe he is guilty or do you believe he's innocent? You know, the jury came back and they said that he's guilty. I, I believe he did not kill Michelle. But they used you as motive. They used me as motive, yes. According to a search warrant in 2004, you told your then roommates that you wanted to get rid of Michelle. These particular roommates that um, came forward had moved out of my home more than a year before I ever met Martin. I believe that they wanted attention and... They said they saw a picture of his wife in your room. That is a totally impossible. Did he invite you to her funeral? No, he didn't invite me. I, I wanted to go and, and pay my respects. 
You sent him seductive pictures the day after he buried his wife. True? You were pretty tame. But yes, there were photos that were sent. I wanted to distract him from his grief, and I wanted him to still think of me. You move in as a nanny. That was the way they, I was portrayed to the family and neighborhood. And you and he, of course, knew that you were a lot more than a nanny. Yes. Did he chew you up and spit you out? He betrayed all of us, all of our trust. He's destroyed my life. Well, Martin and Michelle's second oldest daughter, Alexis, is here today. Now, after Gypsy's interview on our show, we wanted to give her a chance to be a voice for her mother. And you won't believe what she has to say about my conversation with Gypsy. Alexis and her family fought tirelessly for justice for their beloved mom. They refused to rest until her dad was locked away behind bars. My mom and dad were married for 29 years. My father was a physician and was someone who I looked up to. Things began changing around the time my father turned 50. My mother began to become concerned that he was having an affair. My father, out of the blue, told my mother that he was going to get her a facelift. My father demanded that she go through with it right away. And my mother was frightened. She said, Alexis, if anything happens to me, make sure it wasn't your father. After getting back from the facelift, I called and my father answered. And he said, your mother's in the tub. She's not breathing. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I was shaking inside and I just knew that my father had killed my mother. Less than a week after my mother's funeral, he said, Alexis, I found the perfect nanny. Her name is Jillian. And I said, Dad, Gypsy Jillian Willis. And I know Mom was worried if you were having an affair with her. Gypsy knows a lot more than she's letting on. I believe that she was involved with killing my mother. The autopsy report stated that my mother died from natural causes. My sister Rachel and I began this year and a half a crusade just to try to get someone to look into my mother's death. I feel very relieved that my father is now going to spend the rest of his life behind bars. Then the worst nightmare, my mother was my best friend. My whole world was taken away from me the day my mom died. Well, Dr. McNeil's daughter, Alexis, joins us today, along with her aunt, Linda, Michelle McNeil's sister. So I'm, uh, I, I welcome both of you here. V let me say I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank um, you. And I'm glad that both of you were here because Gypsy came in and answered my questions, uh, and I sure wanted to hear what you guys had to say about this as well. Uh, once the death and the investigation, all that, did you learn a lot more about your father than you knew before? Yes, um, you know, the father that I knew was basically a lie. We um, uncovered a web of lies that surrounded my father and um, uncovered who my father actually was. She turned to me and said, Alexis, if anything happens to me, make sure it wasn't your father. Why would your mom think that your dad wanted her dead? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. You say he's an animal that belongs in a cage. They agree their son is uncontrolled. You just came out and you threw a pill bottle at your mother. I don't need pills in order to sit down and talk. But will they give in to him? I'll always forgive him because I love him. Or disown him forever. I regret the day that we adopted Adam. You said that he should have just drove past the hospital? Yeah, maybe that would have been the best choice. America's most watched talk show. That's tomorrow. How would you describe the relationship with your mother between the two of them? I thought my father loved my mother. You know, they were married for 29 years, and uh, my, my mom loved him and, and uh, loved her family. Did you ever hear them argue? I did, and my father was, was a controlling person. When you heard them, them fight or uh, argue, what was it about? The last time I heard them argue, shortly before my mother's death, she had, had wanted his phone records because she had found him calling this, this woman, who turned out to be Gypsy, and she said that she was not going to let that rest, that she wanted his next set of phone records because he was denying this affair. Did you ever talk to her about that when you overheard that? Yeah, I did. I did. I talked to my mom several times. She confided in me 
about her concerns of my father and uh, so and Gypsy, Gypsy Willis was on your radar long before she showed up as a nanny well shortly before because as soon as I found out about Gypsy um, my mother was 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 dead a few days later yeah. why did your mother decide to have a facelift my dad out out of the blue said I want to give you a facelift um, this was the day after he conf she confronted him about being concerned about this Gypsy Willis. And then out of the blue, he, he said, well, let's get you a facelift. And She didn't want to do it? She didn't ask to do that? No, she didn't ask. This was, He said he was going to give her a present of a facelift. And she thought, well, you know, I guess I'll go to the consultation. And, and then she, she liked the doctor once she met him. But she, she didn't want to get the facelift, and especially right away. But he, he did. He said, you know, you have to do it. I've already paid for it. Was there a point at which she told you she was concerned about her safety? Yeah. What did she say? Um, well, there were several instances, but the, the last one was uh, while she was taking a bath, I was helping her wash her hair, and uh, she turned to me and said, Alexis, if anything happens to me, make sure it wasn't your father. If something happens to me, make sure what? Make sure it wasn't your father. Make sure it wasn't your father. Did that shock you? It did. I didn't, I didn't take it seriously at the time. I said, Mom, what are you talking about? He would never hurt you. And uh, a day later, she was dead. Now, there has been testimony that he asked her surgeon to prescribe certain drugs for her. And it, the list, to me, looked like it went beyond what you would normally have to control pain from that kind of surgery. Yeah. What tell me about that? He um, he had a list that he brought to the plastic surgeon and said that he wanted my mother prescribed extra medications, extra narcotics, some things that he said that my mom might need. Right, and then he was dispensing the medicines to her. Initially, when she came home from the hospital, he was um, until I, I went in there the next morning and my mom was completely sedated. Um, I I confronted my father. I said, "What did you give her?" And he said, "Oh, I." I must have given her too much and over-medicated her. And from that point on, uh, I said, I'm taking over the medications. You're not to give her any medicine. So you found her completely unresponsive, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. When she woke up, she said, Alexis, you know, your dad just kept giving me pills. He kept saying swallow. And at that time, her eyes were bandaged. And she had me give her each uh, pill so she could feel in her fingers and, and know what medicine it was in case he tried to give her more medication. So she knew something was going on here. She was very concerned. So she was in fear at that point. She was fearful. Why would your mom think that your dad wanted her dead? I don't know. I mean, I, I know that she was concerned about the affair. Um, she just had, maybe she just had some intuition. When, when you left to go back to medical school, that was how long after you found her unresponsive? That was about six days, and she was doing great by the time I left. I mean, she was back to her normal activities, and we'd just gone out to dinner. Um, I wouldn't have left if she hadn't been doing so well. Right, so she was fine at that point. Yeah. So you thought, okay, she's got her faculties back, yeah. she's yeah. up, she's mm -hmm. moving around. It, it never occurred to you that he would still do something? No, I mean, if, if I would have been concerned, I would not have left. How long before you got the phone call? Um, I flew out the evening of the 10th, and it was the morning of the 11th that my mother uh, was murdered. So you weren't out of the house 12 hours before he made his move, according to court testimony. Yeah. And tell me about that phone call. Um, well, I had called. I actually had received a voicemail from my father while I was in class and I listened to it and it said your mother's not not listening to me she's getting out of bed you need to call her and tell her to get back to bed and I just thought that's really strange because she'd been doing so well I mean she wasn't staying in bed so I called home and uh, no one answered and during my next break I called home again and my father answered the phone and said your mother's in the bathtub and she's not breathing and I've called an ambulance what was your first thought my first thought was he killed her. You just knew it right then? I knew. I dropped all my bags and, and jumped in the car and started driving to the airport. And I was just screaming that he killed her. He killed her. 
Okay, so you get home, you, you drive to the airport, you get a flight, you get home. Tell me about your first interaction with your father when you saw him. Um, I walked right back into the bedroom and I went right to where the medicine was kept and all the medication was gone. And so I turned to my father and the first thing I said to him is, where is the medicine? And he said, I don't know, I think the police must have taken it. Later I found that he had had uh, my brother and his girlfriend uh, flush the medication down the toilet and throw it out. You know. Linda, how did you learn about it? My sister, <clears throat> Carrie, called me and said, have you gotten a call? Is there something wrong with Michelle? What was your first reaction once you knew it was true? Um, I said, oh, he finally killed her. All right, let's take a break. Next, Alexis says right before her mom's death, her mom told her that she suspect Martin was cheating on her with a woman named Gypsy Willis. Well, you won't believe what her father and Gypsy did just weeks after her mother's funeral. We'll talk about that next. My father called me and said, I found the perfect nanny. And I said, Gypsy Jillian Willis, mom was concerned you were having an affair with her and you're not to move her into the home. He basically said, you're no longer welcome in the family. Shortly after my mother's funeral, my father told my sister Rachel, we need to find a nanny. Let's go to the temple and we can pray about it. As they were waiting outside of the temple, this woman came up to my sister and my father and said, I was at the funeral, I'm so sorry for your loss. And my dad looked at her and said, what's your name again? And she'd said, Jillian. He later found out that was Gypsy. They'd set up this encounter with Rachel as an introduction to then bring her in as the nanny. Well, Gypsy Willis says that she had no idea Martin McNeil was planning to kill his wife, Michelle. And it's even harder for her to consider the possibility that she could have been the motive behind the murder. But the doctor's daughter thinks Gypsy is lying. She believes Gypsy was involved in plotting to eliminate her mother from the equation. That's an allegation Gypsy absolutely denies, and she has not been charged in relation to Michelle's death. She says, I, I, I talked to her, she says, didn't see any warning signs, had no clue, um, was shocked, and to this day believes that your mother just had a heart attack. Why do you believe otherwise? Uh, she's an actress. I mean, I, I've just gotten to know who Gypsy Willis is, and she is a lot like my father. Well, Alexis found out after the fact that Gypsy was brazen enough to attend her mother's funeral. Not only that, Gypsy admits she was sending provocative text messages to Martin throughout the entire day. She even texted him during Michelle's funeral service. Take a look. Did he invite you to her funeral? No, he didn't invite me. I, I wanted to go and, and pay my respects. You understand how that sounds to people because you disrespected her in life, but you wanted to pay your respects to her in death. I felt sorry that I had been involved um, inappropriately before it was a possibility. I was so sorry for his family. Did you text him twice during the funeral? Um, I did. You sent him seductive pictures the day after he buried his wife. Yes, there were photos that were sent. But one was your bareback to a mirror, and I mean, they weren't like yeah, I think my at the sure. Grand Canyon or something. The, right. <laughs> the, these were private pictures. Yes. Why did you do that? I wanted to distract him from his grief, and I wanted him to still think of me, even. There's no way to go through this and sound good. I am sorry. She's coming on saying that she was, she was sorry and she respected my mother, and um, she was involved. Uh, she's, she had no respect for, for my mother or my family. How, how did your father behave at your mother's funeral? Was it what one would expect, or was it something unusual? It was unusual. I mean, he began her funeral talk with a joke, um, and then he didn't mention my mother at all during 
during the talk and only talked about his childhood and how he had so many hardships in his life. But, um, you know, at the funeral luncheon, he, he was joking and, and saying he needs to get used to being a bachelor. So the eulogy was all about him. It was. Not about her. That sounds very narcissistic. He's a very narcissistic man. I'd like for you to listen to what Gypsy had to say about pretending to be a nanny moving in to the home. You move in nine days after he buries this woman into her house, right? Yes. Why? Why? Martin and his family were in, in deep chaos, and, um, you know, I, my background was nursing. I thought I could help. How did his children react? Well, his oldest daughter had been there trying to help, and uh, there had been some, some personality conflict, and... Um, and uh, he needed he needed different help, and so it doesn't sound right. I'm sorry. You move in as a nanny, yes. right? That was that was the way they, I was portrayed to the family and neighborhood. Okay, and and you and he, of course, knew that you were a lot more than a nanny. Yes. That you had a, a separate relationship with him. Did the kids suspect that there was more going on? When you first moved in? No, not not when I first moved in. I have heard now that, that they have, or they did, perhaps. But okay. not at the time. That's not true. Um, before she moved in as the nanny, uh, my father called me and said, I found the perfect nanny. And this was about a week after my mother's death. And I said, what's her name? And he said, it's Jillian. And I said, Gypsy Jillian Willis. Mom was concerned you were having an affair with her and you're not to move her into the home. And he was irate, screaming at me, and he basically said, you're no longer welcome in the family. He had this plan. He had my mother's murder planned out and had her moving in right away. And then as soon as she moved in, he got rid of all the children. Gypsy is master manipulator. She's a con artist. She's a lot like my father. Gypsy's former roommates came forward and said that Gypsy wanted to kill my mother. And she had talked about cutting my mother's brakes on her car and having her, her die in a car crash. And they had said to her, Gypsy, you know, she has young children. And Gypsy said, they'll probably be okay. They'll be in car seats. You say that your father and Gypsy created this elaborate ruse for him to find her. What, tell me about that. Well, he had uh, talked with my sister Rachel and said that we need to go to the temple to pray about getting a nanny. And uh, they went to the temple, and Gypsy shows up outside of the temple and comes up to my father and says, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, I was at the funeral. And my, my father said, oh, well, I forget, who are you? What's, what's your name? This was Gypsy's way of being introduced to the family and, I guess, being a divine answer to prayers. So this whole thing was set up. Yes, and she, uh, she, she discussed that in court, how this was all planned. So we're going to go pray about this, and then as an answer to prayer... Here she is. He, he had this plan. He had my mother's murder planned out and had uh, her moving in right away. And then as soon as she moved in, he got rid of all the children. And what do you mean he got rid of all the children? Now, there were eight children, correct? Yes. Um, yeah. four, there were four had been grown, right. were raised. There were the four of you. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. and, and then my four adopted sisters. Four adopted sisters from? Ukraine. So, who was she nannying? I guess. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. It, but it didn't even make yeah. common sense, right? No. Then she said that she was nursing my father back to health because he was claiming that he had had, he had cancer and multiple sclerosis and was dying. Which was a lie as well. So he claimed to have cancer but didn't. Yeah. MS mm -hmm. and didn't. Now, this cancer that he had was located where? Is his, his toe. Is his foot, yeah. his toe? And that's, you know, that was his, his reasoning for not being able to help my mother out of a bathtub because of his, his hurt toe. I mean, it's, 
is ridiculous. Okay, he has a, a sore toe. Basically, yeah. So he can't pull her out of, her out of and save her life. What, what did your mother weigh? Um, about 170 pounds. He was, a, he was a 220 pound, six foot three man. I mean, he was very capable. He allows this six year old to come in and find her in the tub. No, it's horrifying. Um, Ada, it's just been horrifying for her. Why not just get divorced? If he wants to be with with Gypsy, we call that divorce. You get a divorce and you, you exactly. go do what you want to do. I know, but he'd spent, you know, I believe 30 years of his marriage creating this facade of who he was, a respected physician and attorney in the community, a family man. And I believe, you know, if, if he would have gone through with a divorce, not only would he have lost money, but he would have, uh, that facade would have crumbled. And he wouldn't have been portrayed as who he wanted people to be. His think ego he was. wouldn't stand that. That's correct. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, Alexis reacts to Gypsy's shocking confessions. We'll be right back. I'm disgusted by her and by her actions. Was she a Wiccan priestess? She had a shrine of my mother and was casting spells. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. You say he's an animal that belongs in a cage. They agree their son is uncontrolled. You just came out and you threw a pill bottle at your mother. I don't need pills in order to sit down and talk. But will they give in to him? I will always forgive him because I love him. Or disown him forever. I regret the day that we adopted Adam. You said that you should have just drove past the hospital. Yeah, maybe that would have been the best choice. America's most watched talk show. That's tomorrow. Father's brother was found dead in a bathtub, very similar to how my mother died. He's a dangerous person. He can't hurt anyone else anymore. Your father was in the military. He was. And was he discharged for mental illness? Yes. We uncovered documents, um, <clears throat> his discharge documents, um, and uh, mental illness um, played a part into his discharge. I know he, um, he used that defense later um, when he had some issues with, with fraud and, and forgery. So one of his mistresses who testified during the trial came forth to the investigators and told them that my dad had confessed to her about killing his brother, um, drowning him in a bathtub, um, as well as uh, killing some patients that he had worked with. He worked at, at a facility that housed severely mentally disabled People, and he said that he had killed several of them as well. Right. He also mentioned to her that he had tried to kill his mother um, as a child, and uh, she did come forward to the authorities. Wow. And there was a blog created once all of this started coming to light, and people that had encountered him as patients started coming forward at that time, right? right? And they made what allegations? Um, they made allegations of, of rape just abuse allegations. And, and these are all allegations. I want to be very clear. There, no one has sustained a charge in that regard. And these are allegations. They haven't been proven, but they all became part of the fabric of what you were learning yes. about what was being said about your father, at least. Are you surprised that you missed so much this bad about your father? You say he was an actor. Yeah. Um, he, he was a master manipulator. Um, he was a person who was able to lead pretty much two, two lives. And, yeah, it's horrifying. This was a man that I loved and respected. What do you say to yourself? Looking back now, there, there were red, red flags. Um, I, would have, I would have done everything to save my mom. Are you angry at, at Gypsy? Um, no, I like to not try to think about her very much. I um, want to focus <clears> on more more positive things and focus on my mother. Um, but I'm, I'm disgusted by her and by her actions. Was she what's known as a Wiccan priestess? That's what I've been told. What the hell yeah. is that? I have no idea. <laughs> but she had a shrine of my mother in her room and uh, 
told that she was casting spells or I don't, I don't, you know, just unbelievable things to try to harm my mother. Well, uh, Gypsy's ex-roommates testified in court that Gypsy kept photos of Michelle in their apartment, uh, spoke about cutting her brakes, had, had a shrine there. Uh, I asked Gypsy about that. Listen to what she said. According to a search warrant, uh, an affidavit in 2004, it said that you told your then roommates that you wanted to get rid of Michelle. These particular roommates that um, came forward had moved out of my home more than a year before I ever met Martin. I, I believe that they wanted attention. They said they saw a picture of his wife in your room. That is a totally impossible. Did you ever make reference to cutting her brake lines? I never said that to anyone about anything. Did you ever anything? make reference to giving her undetectable medications? No. Wiccan priestess. I mean, is this a... This is something where the roommates say she was casting spells and had this shrine and was really focused on her in some way. She says, didn't happen, couldn't have happened. What do you believe? I believe it did happen. I mean, her roommates really had no reason to come forward. They were actually fearful of Gypsy and were scared to testify. We reached out to Gypsy and asked her to respond to Alexis's allegations that she is a Wiccan priestess, cast spells, and had a shrine to Alexis's mom in her home. Gypsy says that's laughable and completely untrue. This was her response. LOL, sorry to disappoint her. I have friends who are a variety of things, but I am personally of no particular religion. I see many parallels in so many beliefs, there is no point in fighting, excluding over it. I just try to incorporate basic goodness into my life wherever I find it. While I respect all beliefs equally, I don't have any religious affiliation at all. He moves into your mother's house nine days after she is murdered, then ship off a 16-year-old and just appropriate her identity. Did they just sit around and hatch crimes? Now, after Martin moved Gypsy in as the nanny. Uh, one of the things he did was send your 16-year-old sister, mm -hmm. uh, Giselle, to visit relatives in the Ukraine, right? That's correct. So Gypsy could steal her identity. Well, that's exactly what happened. Take a look at this, and then I'll get your reactions. You and Martin were arrested for identity theft. That's correct. Tell me what happened. When Martin and I got together, I had significant debt. He wanted to add me just to give me access to the accounts under his daughter's social security number. So he has a daughter named... Giselle. Now, Giselle is out of the country. This is true. He says, okay, she's away. So he says, we'll just use her name and her social security number. Yes. He said that, one, people wouldn't notice. Two, we were just doing it to grant me access to the account and there was no injury to Giselle. Whose decision was it to send his 16-year-old daughter Giselle out of the country and back to the Ukraine? I think it was a, a family decision, actually. They had found a living sister in Ukraine, and so they had been corresponding back and forth, and Giselle wanted to go live with her sister. And the reports say that once she got there, she couldn't get back home. When she got there, Martin had doubled the family's income, and he spoke to her um, frequently at least once a week. Did she have any idea that you had stolen her identity? Uh, no. Because it just seems beyond coincidental that she gets shipped off, I you understand. take her identity, and that it seems like he got rid of two. Killed his wife and shipped his daughter. You took her identity and moved into his wife's house. Well, not in that order. It was, it, mean, we, it, we thought about this after the fact, yeah, after all these things. You, you, you understand there's a, there is a pattern. Yes, I understand, and it looks awful. I'm sorry. Yeah, it looks awful. He, he moves into your mother's house nine days after she passes or is murdered. 
uh, then ship off the 16-year-old and just appropriate her identity to perpetrate, uh, act, to get ac access to these accounts so the government won't know she has access to money because she owes th them. Did they just sit around and hatch crimes? I believe they did. They I mean, did. It's just, I mean, that sounds very sociopathic on all of their parts to me. Um, did he take care of and stay in contact with your sister while she was in the Ukraine? No. He abandoned her. No contact. No contact. And while they her steal US, her identity. Yeah. They took her U.S. passport, too, to get back to the United States. So she had no way to get back. Who, who took it? My Martin. dad. Martin took it. He said that she, need, she needed to give it to him uh, because she'd probably lose it. So he gets her in the Ukraine and then gets her passport and then cuts off contact with her and steals her identity. When they steal this identity, they go file papers for different things. Mm -hmm. One of the misrepresentations they made was that they were married. Yes. She's How did it feel that they used their wedding date as the date of your mother's funeral? Hor horrifying to uncover, but um, not surprised uh, knowing how, how evil and calculated these, these people <clears throat> were. Chad Grenander, uh, the prosecutor in Martin McNeil's murder trial, is here in our audience today. He has seen a letter that Martin wrote to Gypsy's parents a month after his wife's death. And I'm really curious. Chad, thank you, first off, for being here, and thanks for uh, uh, being so dogged in this prosecution. Happy it's to be here. Tell me about this letter. It's interesting because in the letter, uh, it's obvious that he has met Gypsy's parents earlier, uh, probably a week or so earlier. So this is less than a month after Michelle's death. But in the letter, he expresses to Gypsy's mom that he will be eternally grateful for Gypsy becoming a part of his life. So that was huge, that he's expressing that kind of love for a woman within a month after Michelle's death. Right. And yeah, the relationship escalates by around July 4th. He's on bended knee uh, asking Gypsy to marry him. So things went really, really quickly. There were comments to her mom about, uh, I don't really, I never really loved Michelle. Uh, I loved her more like a sister, not like I loved Gypsy. Were you able to talk to the jury after the verdict came in? We were. What really drove the decision for them? The escalation of his relationship with Gypsy within a month before Michelle's death, her coming into the home right after her death, the spike in the drugs on the first night home when Martin has access to Michelle after the surgery, and then there's a tapering down for several days. The very next opportunity he has access to her when Alexis leaves, there's the spike in the drugs, she's dead in the bathtub. That in addition to the, the application. Uh, where you talked about how they used the mar the, their marriage date as, as Michelle's funeral. Those were big facts. In my closing argument, I referred to the almost perfect murder. It was only almost perfect because he left a number of clues behind. Yeah. A number of them. Uh, let's take a break. I have one important question for Alexis when we come back. It's all been reopened and raw from the trial and all. It would bother me greatly if, if you harbored feelings of guilt about this or played the what if game with yourself. How are you doing with all that? You know, I've, I've gone through uh, so many emotions and I'm just relieved at this point that justice <clears throat> came for my mother. And I'm just uh, so happy that I have my sisters to focus on. Um, I was able to, to raise raise them and they're 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 just wonderful beautiful girls and um, we're just very relieved that he can't hurt anyone else will you ever speak to your father again um, no I won't I mean I'll be able to, I'll have to see him in court sentencing is coming up and uh, I know throughout the years there's going to be probation uh, hearings and so I'll be seeing him and dealing with him for for a long time is it your thought and feeling now that he's where he belongs and he needs to stay there? He's exactly where he belongs. 
do you hope that he never gets out? I do. You do? I don't want him to hurt anyone else. I have to finish this conversation mm -hmm. by giving you an opportunity to uh, tell us about your mother. Well, she was just uh, the most beautiful woman on the inside and out, someone that, that loved, loved everyone and loved her family. I know it's, it's difficult, but I, I really hope that you focus on the, the process of her life and mm -hmm. all of the joy and memories that you had, and not just on the day of her tragic death. That was one moment in the movie of her life, but all the rest of it was so joyful and so happy and so giving that that's a life to be celebrated and not remembered because of that, that painful moment that she became a victim. And I, I, I hope you choose to, to do that. Uh, I would like to thank Alexis uh, and Linda for being here to share their thoughts and feelings. I would also like to thank Prosecutor Chad Grunander for his expertise on this matter. Uh, for more information, you can go to drphil.com. Thanks for being here. So long. All right, Beth, come get you all in just one second. Thank you so much. I just wanted to finish talking about you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.